Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we'll be going over how to interact with Sharp Tools via HTTP. We'll also be going over how Sharp Tools can send HTTP or webhook requests as an action. What's great about an HTTP request is that it allows for you to easily trigger a Sharp Tools rule from any platform that can support sending an HTTP post message. This includes from If This Then That, a Stream Deck, or even a phone running Tasker. Let's first take a look at triggering a Sharp Tools rule with a webhook request. For this example, I want to be able to scan an NFC tag on my phone that will then set a virtual switch on my SmartThings hub to on, which then drives a bypass function of a certain automation. To take things a step further, I'm going to have multiple NFC tags, and each NFC tag will trigger a different virtual switch. To do this, I'll be using an app on my phone called Tasker to trigger an HTTP request being sent whenever an NFC tag is scanned. The tag scanned will determine some key information sent within the HTTP request that SharpTools will then use to determine what to do. To get started, we'll create a new rule and give it a name. Next, we'll create an event trigger with a type of HTTP. This will create a unique URL that will be used later on. This URL will only be used for the rule it is created under, and you should make sure to keep it protected. Anyone with this link would be able to trigger your Sharp Tools rule without needing to know your Sharp Tools username and password. You can click on the copy icon to the right to copy the whole URL, which you can then save in Notepad. While you don't need to have any parameters set up for this to work, for what I'm doing, I will be triggering different actions based on different if blocks that will be looking for a specific parameter. To add a parameter, simply click on the Add Parameter button and type in a name. Keep in mind that they are case sensitive. You can have a large number of parameters predefined for an HTTP event trigger, or you do not have to predefine any. Setting them up now, though, allows for you to easily pick them out later on in rule flow creation and helps make sure you're using the same parameter each time it's referenced when being used. For this rule, I'll be using a single parameter which will let me know which NFC tag was scanned. Once all the parameters are set up, click on Save for the action. One thing to keep in mind is that you can only have one HTTP event trigger per rule. If you want to have multiple URLs, for some reason, each one would need its own rule. Next will be to create the rule flow. Just like any other rule, you don't actually need any if conditions for actions to occur. You can simply add actions and they would happen when the trigger occurs. For what I'm doing though, I will be creating an if block for each different NFC tag that will be dictated by what is included in the HTTP request. For this rule, I'll need to make if blocks for when an NFC tag is scanned for my back door, front door, garage door, and backyard gate. To use an HTTP request parameter as an if condition, select the variable condition and change to the context variable section. You'll then need to navigate through event to HTTP event to parameters, where you will find the list of all your parameters you created under your trigger, along with the ability to define a custom parameter. If you only see custom parameter here, that means you did not properly predefine any parameters earlier, and you need to go back to your trigger if you want them predefined. For me, I'll be using the predefined parameter of automation. You can then select an operator just as you would pretty much any other condition, and then enter in the value you expect to interact with. For my rule, I will be sending the name of the tag, so I'll be putting in the name for the first tag, which will be back hallway door. Again, these values are case sensitive, so I do recommend just doing all upper or lower case and sticking with it, or you could run into some problems later on that could be annoying to troubleshoot. Just like any other if condition, you can have multiple conditions within the if block, including checking multiple different parameters sent from the HTTP request. For this rule though, I'll just be having the one condition. Now we can add in our actual actions. Since this if block is looking for an automation parameter of back hallway door in the HTTP message, my action will be to turn on a virtual switch that will be used in a different automation rule that I won't be covering in this video. I'll now need to go through and create several if blocks, one for each automation parameter I'll be expecting, which will then turn on the appropriate virtual switch based on the value received. Once you have your rule created, make sure to save it. And now that it's saved, let's take a look at how my rule is set up and walk through how it will run. My rule has a single HTTP event trigger that will be triggered when the unique URL is hit. It currently has two predefined parameters, automation and variable. For rule flow, I have several if blocks that have a condition looking for the automation parameter within the HTTP request, and will evaluate as true if the correct case sensitive string is sent. As long as an expected string is received, then the appropriate if block will evaluate true, which will then turn on the designated virtual switch I have set up. For example, if a parameter of front door is received, then my bypass front door notification virtual switch will turn on. With the rule set up as we want and the custom URL and parameter name saved, we can move on to actually creating our HTTP requests. 
For this video, we'll be going over how to set up HTTP requests with Tasker on Android to be triggered when I scan an NFC tag, as well as part of an if this then that trigger. For Tasker, first we'll create a new project and I'll be naming it Automation Bypass. Next will be to add our events, which in my case will be an NFC tag which I can just search for. On the event editor, clicking on the magnifying glass next to ID will allow you to scan the ID of the NFC tag you want to use to trigger your Tasker automation, which you can do so by placing the NFC tag on the NFC reader of your phone. Depending on the tag you are using, you may get a pop-up indicating that Tasker cannot use the tag contents, but instead just the ID without formatting. For this instance, we are going to click on No so that the formatting of the tag does not occur. And we will click on OK on the second pop-up confirming our decision. The tag ID should then show up in the ID field. Clicking back will bring us back to the Profiles section and a window should automatically open where we will click on New Task. Doing so will give a name prompt for the task, which I will use HTTP in this instance. Clicking on the plus sign will give a list of possible actions which we will search for HTTP request and select it. Under Method, we need to change it to Post. Under URL, we will place the copied URL from the rule we created earlier. If you don't plan on using any parameters, then you are done with the action creation. Because I'm using parameters, I need to add additional information within the body section. For this example, I want to trigger with an automation parameter of backdoor. If you want to send multiple parameters, you can within the body of the HTTP request with a comma between each parameter. If you want to test out the task, you can click on the place sign at the bottom left hand side of the screen. Instead of making you sit through me adding in all the different NFC tags and HTTP requests, I'm going to use a little movie magic to make things just happen. Right now I have three different tags set up, each tied to its own HTTP request task. With each task, sending an HTTP post to the same URL, but with different parameters in the body. I did go ahead and create future tasks I'll need once I finish placing my NFC tags. But for now, they are not all being used. A quick tech tip. It's best practice to use an NFC tag ID as a trigger for an automation similar to how I'm showing in this video. Other ways could involve writing the URL to the tag so that when the tag is scanned, the URL is opened. This is not a good practice to follow, as anyone with an NFC reader could get the URL by scanning the tag and then triggering the automation by browsing to that URL. While not a big deal for something like what I'm doing, I have seen others use this process for unlocking a smart lock, in which you obviously wouldn't want anyone with a phone to be able to just walk up and scan a tag and be able to get into your house. Let's test out scanning one of the NFC tags to make sure it turns the correct virtual switch on. Great, scanning the NFC tag triggers my tasker automation as expected, which in turn triggers Sharp Tools to turn on the correct virtual switch. Let's now take a look at sending an HTTP request to Sharp Tools from If This Then That. For this custom applet, I'm going to use a trigger of my robot vacuum bender completing a clean cycle, and it will trigger the backyard door bypass virtual switch through Sharp Tools. Because Bender likes to go outside for his breaks after cleaning, I don't need to be notified every time he does. For the action, click on Add, next to, then that, after your trigger is created. Next we will search for webhooks and select it. Next click on Make a Web Request. Under URL goes the URL from the Sharp Tools rule we copied earlier, and the method needs to be changed to post. For if this then that, HTTP requests will also need to have their content type set to application JSON. If you are using parameters with your HTTP request, you can put them under the section labeled body. If you aren't using any, you can click on create action. Because I'm using parameters, I need to add additional information within the body section. For this example, I want to trigger with an automation parameter of backyard door. Clicking on create action will bring us back to the applet creator, where we can click on continue once our trigger and action are set up. On the next screen, you can give your applet a specific name and enable notifications of when it runs if you want. Clicking on Finish will save the applet and enable it. Let's now test out the automation. Great! When the robot vacuum finishes its cleaning cycle, the virtual switch gets turned on as expected. For an example of sending an HTTP request, I'll be having an automation action send an HTTP post to my web core instance running on Hubitat that will then trigger another automation. For this video, I will not be going over how to receive HTTP requests in WebCore, and I already have the URL I need saved. To send an HTTP request, click on HTTP under the Action Selection section. For WebCore, I will need to change the method to post, and then I will paste in the URL. You can also change the content type and add a payload or headers to the request if needed. 
A nice feature of Sharp Tools is that you can actually use variables to help build the URL being hit, as well as for the payload. This can be very handy if you want to have less rules or if blocks while sending different requests. I'd love to know how you use HTTP requests in your automations, so make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that they should show it to other people. Not to mention, it helps me know if I should keep making videos like this. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be one of the first to know when I release other smart home automation videos just like this one. Thank you for watching.